Now we are here for the hot DFS deals and strategy. Shoot over to fantasyfootballsling.com and check out our deals. And also, you can find us on Twitter at Fantasy Fling. My co hosts, Eric, Joey, and I, uh, we do share a season long league that we'll talk a little smack, maybe even fling a few insults. That said, uh, we come together on the Fantasy Fling podcast for our love of the weekly DFS grind. Speaking of that DFS grind, although we are fantasy fling, fantasy football without the commitment, we do get into a couple commitments. Uh, this season, we have partnered with Thrive Fantasy, and right now, uh, they will match your $20 deposit with a $20 sign-up bonus. Uh, just use promo code Fantasy Fling. They have eliminated the need to do countless hours of research because they only ask you about the top-tier athletes in your respective sports. Choose 10 out of the 20 player prop options to build your lineup. The more points a selection is worth, the riskier it is. You can find them at thrivefantasy.com or in the app store on your mobile device. Remember, use f- promo code FANTASYFLING for that $20 sign up bonus with a $20 deposit. And the uh, second sponsor we have that we're very proud to have is uh, DFS Army. Wanting to win a DFS or DFF. Is great, but you need the tools to do so. Uh, as I said, extremely happy to partner with DFS Army, provide a VIP membership for 20% off. If you use the promo code Fantasy Fling, one word, uh, Fantasy Fling for 20% off. If you want to win big, you need to have the right players and the right research and the right products to, to get you there. Uh, level up with DFS Army, turning Joes into DFS pros. Use promo code Fantasy Fling for 20% off. Again, it's Fantasy Fling, Fantasy Fling, one word for 20% off. Awesome. Uh, without further ado, Joey, uh, I want to introduce yourself and, uh, and the App Action Network. Cool. Awesome. I am so excited to be doing this right now. Uh, I do a lot of other podcasts and they're boring as well. Shit. So uh, this <laughs> one's going to be a little bit more of my alley on it. So yeah, no, I appreciate uh, that we're doing this and it's going to be fun. And now that we actually have the podcast studio set up, we can actually do some uh, kind of interesting things of what we're going to do with this. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry I couldn't make last week. Uh, you know, was, we had a big event, and I just I couldn't get away from it. And that's the pleasures of starting a nonprofit is <laughs> you being able to do that. Uh, but, anyways, uh, hey, I'm Joe. I'm partnering with Fantasy Fling with Brandon and Eric. Uh, we're going to be talking about this. Uh, we are a veteran service organization that connects communities to veterans. Uh, we help veterans. Um, really find all those programs and resources outside of the VA system. Uh, we partnered with our technology provider, Aunt Bertha. We are now the largest uh, veteran service referral platform in the country. We have 2.3 million resources at our disposal. Uh, so if anybody needs help out there, when it comes down to really anything, you just get on afteractionnetwork.org. Uh, you can sh- search by zip code. Uh, you can get connected with one of our veteran navigators and we can help you out. But uh, besides uh, really kind of the referral stuff, we do a lot of other things of getting veterans connected in the community. Uh, we do like Tuesday nights actually is our VR league. Um, it's pretty fun. It's a six week league that we put on for veterans. We just go in, play VR and shoot zombies. And yeah, it's actually pretty fun. We do kickball, volleyball. Uh, we also have our fantasy football uh, league as well too. So uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, of course, all- Eric and I are in that league too. I know, right? Yeah, you had to get you guys in there. Well, and that's that's what we do is how to, how to mix it up. We yeah. have uh, all common bonding interests, and so that's really kind of what we do is how do we pair up civilians and veterans together and, um, you know, talk about things outside of life, you know what I mean? Because life always happens, and fantasy football is yeah. there, so looting for life. For sure. That was a great, uh, great intro, intro to that after Action Network. Um, and yeah. I have to really say I appreciate that, being a veteran myself. appreciate what you do for – fellow veterans and, and they're looking after them. It's, uh, it's always much appreciated. I think it's, it's something that's kind of swept under the rug or forgot about sometimes. Thank you very much for doing that. No, no worries, man. I appreciate it. So that's what we're here for. And yeah, this is going to be fun. So yeah, we're not, uh, we're trying to break away from that uh, antiquated, you know, old system of how they treat veterans out there and how do we introduce technology to actually make a difference in <laughs> veterans lives makes it a hell of a lot easier and making it fun. Cause I know for me, it's, you know, I don't like to go into bars where people are just sitting there and it's like a cloud of smoke you walk in. And it's only veterans uh, just 
you know, the youngest guy there by like 50 years. <laughs> Do something a little bit more fun. Yeah. Than that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, it's appreciated by many people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yes. I guess it's only natural that the three of us came together to do this podcast because in our league, uh, we're always the three most active people. Uh, <laughs> it's just it's always how it's been. In fact, uh, I'm pretty sure between the three of us, what we've done in our league, eight, nine years, we've got yeah. uh, what, seven championships between the three of us. <laughs> how many ex-girlfriends? And, uh, I mean, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I have the three of the seven. So I, <laughs> I have the most, but I also have the most ex girlfriends so yeah that's your fault for keep bringing for girls into our <laughs> league it's like the curse of our league you just you don't bring girlfriends <laughs> into our league married yeah we're good no, love girlfriends, in the league. no 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 love at all in there. so i'm gonna bring up this story because i think it's funny um so i'm gonna bring the story up i think it's funny brandon um and there's there's no last names used so i think this is okay he invited <laughs> and emily to the league last year. Oh, and he texted God. the wrong Emily in his phone, which ended up joining the league. So he had two Emilys join the league, but one oh, by yeah. accident, or maybe both by accident, and uh, ended up turning yeah. it into a 14 team league. It was pretty, uh, yeah, there was a yeah. failure of, uh, of last name saving or whatever the case may be. Yeah, yeah. Two Emilys. So two ex girlfriends in the league last year. <laughs> those damn iPhones it's you know it's it's easy to get them confused I, I don't know what else to say that's not my finest moment well I'll tell you what <laughs> well, so I'm moving, moving on week, week one <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, so yeah. It's that week one I'm out about the girls that have been in our league yeah oh god yeah so funny. top hot plays of last weekend uh it was a crazy DFF in week one I mean it was just a crazy week and uh week one and in the NFL history, it's the first time, you know, no preseason games. So uh, with that, it was kind of all over the place, as, as you could expect it. Uh, starting at the quarterback position on DraftKings, and of course they do um, full PPR. You had Wilson coming in at the top, uh, Russell Wilson with 31 points. Uh, Rogers next. He uh, was not impressed by Jordan Love being drafted. He went out, and proved it. Thirty point seven six points. Uh, Josh Allen, the guy may be inaccurate as fuck in the red zone, but he can run the ball. He came in at twenty eight points. And Lamar Jackson, everyone knew he was going to be a stud this year, as always in fantasy football. Uh, 27 points. And then Kyler Murray, a lot of people really expected him to kind of take the league by storm this year uh, with the addition of DeAndre Hopkins. And uh, he did not disappoint week one. He had 27 points. The crazy thing, uh, there was some really good value this week. Uh, I personally went with Lamar Jackson. I know the guy, the top guy in the GPP pool on uh, DraftKings. He went with him as well uh, for 27 points, but at a price of 8,200. You know, you, you certainly paid up to get him. So I'd say Russell Wilson, you know, 65 finishing in the top uh, as a top performer. He just had was incredible value. And then also Murray at uh, 6,100. Eric or Joey, running backs. Yeah, I know. Well, I, would, I also wanted to talk about the quarterbacks on there what we have going on there yeah i was really oh, surprised boy. yeah i was really yeah, surprised you uh the, you to make the list i know right yeah. I, you know, yeah we still do have the list going down there so you got to forgive me for hopping on here uh first time on it um yeah yeah we can go on there i was <laughs> actually kind of really surprised by that i mean mahomes oh god that killed me you know man after my own heart on it and yeah that was kind of a womp 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 uh yeah on there uh but i'm kind of surprised that wasn't on here i know it was just kind of vanilla all the way through but cam newton i mean he's what three touchdowns or rushing touchdowns in that game so i don't know maybe that can bring some life yeah yeah no absolutely value wise it was really good yeah yeah all right so i'll get into the the facts yeah no. All right. So I'll get into the running backs real quick. Uh, so uh, we've got Josh Jacobs had a really impressive game. 
Uh, 35 points in that. Christian McCaffrey, as always. That's my boy. Um, yeah, my boy, st- Stud on there with 28 <laughs> points. Zeke Elliott, 27 points. Looks like he's getting back to it. Nyman Hines, 27. Malcolm Brown, that was sitting on my bench with 26 points. That was a very disappointing <laughs> thing. And who expected that of, like, Malcolm Brown to come out of there? Like, when I got stuck yeah. with Malcolm Brown in our league, I was just like, oh, man, like – then he actually looked pretty good, but you know that's that's kind of the surprise there with, yeah. with DFS. It's kind of like that one. I doubt anybody had <laughs> him on there. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, that that backfield is kind of uh, up in the air with with all the guys that they have, and it has been that way for a couple of years. But how about Josh Jacobs, Eric? I know when I stole him from you in the draft, you were so happy about that. Yeah, one pick before me, of course. Every every year, as we talk about in the last five last podcast, you're always we're always one or two picks away, and J- Jacobs yeah. is that was who I was targeting in every league. Yeah, I, you look at him last year. Yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah, I'm not surprised yeah. what happened. I'm not surprised at all. He's like Joe Mixon, but better, better version of Joe Mixon. Yeah. Well, and I might add there's – thousands of podcasts out there right but we might be the most screwed up podcast in the fact that we have a broncos fan a raiders fan and a chiefs fan on this podcast oh yeah. same division uh, yeah right just gotta yeah, get that chargers yeah. fan in here yeah well we'll see i don't know that i have any they're kind of spare they're kind of hard to find yeah you're yeah, right <laughs> you gotta search high and low <laughs> Well, yeah. it's also fitting that I do the receivers because I am uh, – I, I kind of follow the uh, zero RB or modified zero RB. Not every draft, but oftentimes I do because I've had success with it. So that I'm doing receivers would make sense. Uh, but to your point on Jacobs, guys, it's done. I wish you hadn't taken from me. But, uh, you know, Devontae Adams, is it a surprise he finished first? I mean, the, draft, the Packers went out. They didn't draft any receivers. They picked up Devin Pontus, who, you know, opted out for COVID. Uh, yeah. Their second best receiver is Alan Zard. I don't know. They didn't draft anybody, so it's not a surprise that he kind of returned to form. That he, he crossed it. I mean, was, you know, barring injury, yeah. good chance to him number one. Um, you know, he scored with 40, 41 and a half points. Uh, Calvin Ridley, <laughs> the guy's a stud as well. He, he's a beast, and he actually outscored I think Julio, not in yards but in touchdowns. Like Julio again. Tons of yards with no touchdowns. But Calvin Ridley was a stud this week as well. Uh, Adam Thielen, which I know, Joey, you picked up at least in our league. He's yep. one of them. Um, I, I was avoiding him everywhere, and I, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> I might have been wrong by be, uh, eating my words on that one. Yeah, uh, just thought, Hopkins. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I thought when uh, Thielen with him, like, I'm glad I got Calvin Ridley in the other league as well, too. But Thielen um, – once, uh, oh God, what's his name? Went over to Buffalo. I was like, yeah, I think he was due for something. He, he, he was waiting for it. Yeah, Diggs. Diggs. Yep, there we go. Yep. Yeah, I'm completely blanking out on it. Yep, keep going. Uh, no, I, it, yeah, I thought that maybe the coverage would just be completely confined to him and he wouldn't do as well, but I was wrong. I mean, one of the touchdowns was 100% garbage time. Take it what you will, but it's still, you know, fantasy football garbage time, garbage time chance. So, um, the other one was DeAndre Hopkins. He was a big, for a lot of people, he, he was, like, probably the most controversial player of the year. It was, like, look at Odell Beckham last year. He's teams, and the track record, yeah. track record of even studs teams is not good. Yeah. But D-Hop is, is, is another, on another level. Um, and he had one of the – he had an incredible game. He had, like, 15 targets, I think, 16. Uh, almost – he got stopped at the half, like, the six-inch line. For a yeah. touchdown, I mean, the guys, he, he did great. I'm not surprised with the high-powered offense. And uh, Darius Slayton is probably the one who showed up on the list. Uh, with 28 points, that was not expected. I mean, he, he looked good. You see a rookie that has, um, you know, low volume but great efficiency, just like A.J. Brown, you expect them next year they're going yeah. to get better um, or they're going to get more opportunity, rather. But uh, he did. He, he made the he, – he crushed it. He, Darius Slayton, whoever played him, congratulations because you uh, – Probably one. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, especially at five thousand dollars, like you. Yeah, uh, you crushed it on the value. Right? Thousand, what? Ten, you double your X. You cover your uh, usually when you're playing for all the fifty fifties. You're looking for two X. Yeah. And he, you know, that was, it was a ridiculous uh, amount, almost three X there. I know. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 
It was definitely uh, a week for the studs in fantasy football uh, for wide receivers. If you played, if you played lineups and you went with you know some of the younger uh, guys, you probably didn't do as well. You know, some of the rookies, you didn't do as well as you know if you went with the Devonte Adams of the league and the Thielens and DeAndre Hopkins. So it was good for those guys. Um, any other comments on the wide receivers? I think that's it. It was a good. It was actually a good week for receivers and running backs. Uh, overall, pretty good. Yeah. Moving on to the tight ends. Uh, everyone loves the tight end. So. Everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Um, Dallas Goddard at the top. I. Uh, I'm bullish on Dallas Goddard this year, uh, as you could probably tell if you saw on the waiver wire. Blind bid today. I spent fifty dollars. Fifty percent of his fab. Wow. Fifty percent. I just have to say, it. fifty. So if he, if he had a thousand dollar fab, he uh, spent five hundred. Yeah, hundred dollars. In the first. Fifty percent. Here's, of here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, first of all, I think he's better than Zach Ertz, and I think that's why the Eagles have not resigned Zach Ertz because they know it. I think he's going to be better than Zach Ertz this year, and I already have Kelsey, so I can flex Goddard. And if he ends up being as good as I think he's going to be, it's trade bait. Easy for me. I know how this, I know how this league is. I I'm not going to take all my, mon- <laughs> all, all my money to the end. I got, sometimes you got to overspend at the beginning. And I was a little sad when I woke up and saw, like, the highest bid for him was $10, and I spent 50 But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so, you know, he's a top tight end uh, this week. So I guess it was justified. This week, at least, we'll see moving forward. Uh, Five thousand dollars. I mean, you got twenty-four points. You can't beat it. Uh, number two, Mark Andrews uh, came in at twenty-two point eight. Look, man, uh, I, I definitely stacked Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews. That's a stack that I think is going to be money all year. Um, mm-hmm. He's a beast with Lamar Jackson. Absolutely. Noah Fant. Noah Fant. Um, I'm a Broncos fan. I mean, what more can I say about this guy? He's he's got all the skill set to be a top five tight end. Um, he certainly played as one this past week. Uh, you saw really a lot of what he can do. You know, after the catch, just making these freak catches, whatever it may be. And honestly, I was super pissed watching the game the other night as a Broncos fan because they didn't target him in the second half. What are you doing? He really should have finished as the number one tight end if they had kept targeting him in the second half like they did in the first half. And then you got Travis Kelsey. Joey, how happy <laughs> were you when I took Travis Kelsey in the second round of our draft? Um, yeah, it was not bad on it. I like I, – I don't know. I, I don't know. Chief, the only thing with the Chiefs that I was really one was – uh, Hilaire. I mean, because it there's so yeah. much spread around there, but Kelsey is just so dependable in the end zone. It's not even funny. It's just like all you got to do is that little cross route on yeah. there, and he just fires it in there, and it's just every single time because you can't, you know, you can't, you can't really defend against that unless you've been like double or triple teaming them. And you know, with the way the Chiefs' offense are, they can spread that ball. I mean, Sammy Watkins had a great day. It's like, come on, <laughs> like. <laughs> You got to figure this one out, but yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it was good. It, just with our draft too, it's like every single time, like right before I go for that pick. That's why I hate picking like six, seven, or eight. We talked about this before. I hate picking six, seven, or eight, and either having you or mm-hmm. Eric below me or behind me because I know when it comes back down that other way, it's like, damn, like I'm not gonna get this one that I want. Yeah, hoping it goes to the next round. Yep, I took Tyreek in one and, and uh, Kelsey in the other. So, yeah. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. The whole reason I took Kelsey, I normally don't take tight ends that early, but when you have, and it pains me to say this as a Broncos fan, but when you have a, a Chiefs team that's capable of making, you know, the season, uh, the single season scoring record, you want a piece of that pie. So oh, yeah. Knowing that if I if I didn't take Kelsey or you know Tyreek Hill was gone and you had already taken, you know Clyde Edwards, that that was my chance at a piece of the offense. You know mm-hmm. I wanted it. So 
that's what I did. And, you know, it's always nice to steal a pick from you or Eric, just to push you guys <laughs> off, you know, especially with one of your teammates <laughs> exactly. or one of your team players. Um, last, TJ Hawkinson. Uh, he's one of those guys I expected to take a big step this year. Um, you know, he – a lot of comparisons to Gronk coming out, and he, he had went and had himself a pretty good first week. So, uh, round out top five. As far as defense, won't get too much into the defense. Not super exciting. Uh, the Washington football team, surprisingly, yeah, they pretty much uh, destroyed Wentz. So, they ended up at the top uh, with 15 points. Uh, the Ravens, it's going against the Browns. It's going against Baker Mayfield. You saw this coming. Um, defense, I don't I will put myself on the back a little bit here. Uh, the New Orleans Saints, number three. I, although I expected uh, this to be like a shootout, I woke up and I just had a feeling, you know, Brady doesn't always start the season super hot. He's with the new team. I can see this going bad. And uh, sure enough, it did, especially the way he finished last yeah. year. <laughs> and I talked about it. I talked about it in the chat. This is the third game in a row where we have seen Brady throw a pick six. It's the third game in a row. He doesn't have the same zip on his passes. When he's moving around in the pocket, he, he looks like a 43-year-old starting to move around in the pocket. There's definitely some regression there. So I guess I kind of saw it coming. Uh, I believe the Saints defense was just ridiculously cheap, and they produced 15 points. So it ended up uh, – doing really well for me uh number four los angeles chargers we know that defense the stacks um even without derwin james uh, 11 points and then bill check is a bell check is it brady maybe it's a little both um he still can coach a defense new england patriots 11 points that's it for that. I mean, nobody cares about kickers. We're not, we're not going to listen to <laughs> kickers. <Yeah. laughs> I, I tell you, Goskowski is definitely uh, not making the top five. No, top five. I will say, I will say, both you and I, Brandon, played McManus in a league, and we both lost by less than three points. We needed one field goal. I mean, you know, we both lost. So just, just saying, just, that's, that's, that's just, I, just unbelievable. I and I was trying to play and win without a kicker. So I picked up McManus last second, and I'm like, oh, at least give me five points because it was, it was coming down to the wire. Two points. And then, of course, A.J. Brown dropped the winning touchdown pass for me to beat Paul. You know, this that's, will be that's a proposition <laughs> you lost next year. Just, just throw it out there. This will take eight seconds. It's pretty sad. We, we get rid of kickers for an extra flex next year. I agree. Okay, I agree. Let's do it. I agree. Um. Yeah, I guess some of the guys that did well for me, uh, I went pretty heavy on uh, Jacobs. I went uh, on Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, um, Kamara, and then the Saints D. Um, those guys, pretty solid for me in DFF. What about you, Eric? Uh, I, you know, I think – I did go heavy on Jacobs. I am a, I'm a Raiders fan, but I'm not a homer by any means. If you look at my drafts, I rarely ever take a Raider, ever. <laughs> and it's sad because Jacobs is the only one I, I would have taken this whole year. Maybe Ruggs. And it, yeah. But anyway, uh, Jacobs I took everywhere I could. Every draft I could and every DFS I could. Um, I followed yeah. by Kamara. And I think with Kamara, people forgot about how good he is. He a stud. He was last year, knee, back, mm -hmm. everything. The guy was yeah. a stud. He proved it. He, he was – like an inch away from a third touchdown too, which may have won or lost you thousands of dollars, by the way. Yeah. But uh, Kamara Jacobs, um, I really like Rivers. I know it's a controversial choice, but he always starts the season off hot and then dies yeah. mid-season. Um, also, I played Slayton a lot, uh, and that worked out pretty well too. But I will admit, I don't always have good picks, and so I'll have to throw some of my bad ones out there too because I'm, I'm wrong a lot. I thought Antonio Gibson would, would be the lead back and do really well. Not so much. Yeah. Uh, Cohen uh, didn't do too well either. And probably yeah. my biggest boss who I invested a lot in was uh, Boston Scott. Yeah, he he, he, yeah. he didn't yeah. do too well. Um, the other one was Hayden Hurst. I thought he'd do really well because uh, that round has to check down, but not so much. So mm -hmm. um, 50, yeah. 50, but thankfully the ones I, I invested the most in carried me through the, uh, through the wins. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm right there with you. I, that kind of leads perfectly into the next one with Walk of Shame of who's the biggest disappointments on there because that's where I was right there with you with Hayden Hurst and Bar- Bar- Scott as well too. I was like, ah, oh, damn it. Like, just so like, mm, yeah, it was terrible. Uh, yeah, you guys, you mean run into the next one? Absolutely. Yeah, so we're getting into our Walk of Shame segments right here where this is where <laughs> – Keyboards get broken and laptops get shattered uh, right here. So we had the top performances. Uh, now let's talk about our shame candidates and DFF. Uh, Eric, what do you got going on with this? There were a few. Um, I think the, the the person I played the most, which you kind of mentioned, I mentioned as well, was uh, was Boston Scott. Like I played him, so I went really heavy on, on the stuff running backs with the uh, you know. Caffrey and Jacobs were defensive as well. I was super cheap on, on Fox and Scott. He, he's probably my biggest uh, walk to shame candidate that I played. I played him everywhere, including my, my wife's league that I helped her with. And then mm-hmm. uh, didn't go too well. In my league, too. I, no, I, yeah, I played him. I, I played him because uh, Santos is out. I played him. And uh, actually, I lost because of that. So, big walk of shame for myself. That's I, I dropped him like right before the game because I don't know I don't know why I dropped him in our league, and I was like oh and then the news came out about Sanders and I was like oh man that was so dumb and then I watched the game and I'm like yes I'm so glad I did that <laughs> then I ended up picking up Josh Allen and I was like okay I'm glad I did that I'm really glad I actually did that yeah. What about you, Brandon? What's uh, what were you at with that? I know, uh, I know in the league technically Gatlin probably even. So we'll, we'll include that song here shortly, but uh, yeah, the Gatlin scored eighty-four points, the lowest total by twenty. <laughs> Pretty low, fifteen. Something yeah, like that. And he's the one who lost the league last. Year. It's not a great start. Yeah, so for me personally, um, Eckler. You know, I expected more from Eckler. I guess uh, you got to take into consideration Rivers really likes to target as running backs. He's no longer there. So Completely. That is a that is a huge drop-off that uh, not a lot of people saw coming because everyone was high on Eckler um, this year. You know, everyone that I heard from anyways. So, uh, D. Moore in Carolina, nine points for me. Not going to cut it, really. Uh, McLaurin is a guy that I've been high on. Uh, I targeted him in drafts all year. I thought, really thought he would have a big week. Um, with Dwayne Haskins, this wasn't happening this week. Um, 11 points. Marvin Jones, same thing. I thought with Galladay out, Marvin Jones is the guy this week. Uh, not really the case, actually. So, <laughs> not um, at all. Yeah. I will say, I'll, I'll do a little walk of shame. Uh, I started 0-3 in uh my leagues this week and one week one league i scored 143 points and i lost about 144 and it's my <laughs> fault for being an idiot because i tried to win without a kicker um and i did not win without a kicker so um but gatlin i mean come on so i'll preface this by saying that uh we i don't mean dick and pick on Gatlin, <laughs> who we've dubbed as a redheaded stepchild of our league. Sorry, but he, but he just makes it so easy. So he easy. Never, never is prepared. He picks the same crappy players pretty much all the time, like every year. Uh, if it's an OU player and he has a chance to get him, he's taking him. Yeah, right. Baker Mayfield, for example. Um, and then, so it's one thing. I'm prefacing this by saying that we had uh, we we have league punishment in our league, and what was going to happen is he was going to go to a karaoke bar, and he was going to sing "Loser" by Beck in front of our league. Oh God, well, that would have been happened. so good. Oh uh, yeah, would have been. Money. Oh yeah, it would have been. It would have been way better. Oh, and also, God. it would have been way, way bigger punishment. So so he got off easy. Coronavirus happened. We didn't go to the karaoke bar. So we said, all right, we're going to do. The draft, before the draft, we're going to have you do your punishment, your rendition of Loser on the Zoom call. Well, (laughs) couldn't figure out Zoom. Surprise, surprise. And then he sends us what he calls uh, rendition of Loser. Paul called it uh, Chris Collinsworth 
commentary was horrible. It was, it was the worst <laughs> rendition of any karaoke song you've ever heard. It was horrible. Um, and yeah, and then he scores 84 points this week, um, which is by far the league lowest. I mean, this is a half PPR league. And to top it off, in typical Gatlin fashion, we do a blind bid. It's the second year we've done it. You get $100 for the season. Oh, and he did it. <laughs> he bids on three players, $0 for all three of them. I'm like, Gatlin, you realize that uh, you don't get to keep that money and that you actually have to spend money to get players, right? He asked me, is it $100 per week or for the season? <laughs> I'm trying to pull up I mean, that on the chat box. <laughs> Yeah, I just remember that being on the chat. Or, what, or maybe you texted it to me. I was laughing my ass off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got to have a chat with Paul. Honestly, like, comparing him to Chris Collinsworth of the, of the analysis yeah. is, is 100% inaccurate. Chris yeah. Collinsworth is one of the best action analysts there is. I think Paul's a uh, taco. You've been listening, Paul. Yeah. You're, uh, you're out your mind. You may not like him, but he's one of the best there in the business. Like, he actually analyzes plays. I know Romo is probably the best. And you're wrong. Yep. You're wrong, Paul. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Gatlin gets the walk of shame uh, for the week. He's definitely doing the walk of shame. And this is going to be a weekly segment, and I have a suspicion he's going to be appearing on it a lot. So <laughs> That's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm just trying to stay out yeah. of that limelight. <laughs> that's all I'm trying to do. Yeah. Definitely. All right. So you mean play the song? I gotta share my yeah, screen real naturally. quick so we can hear it on there. All right. Here we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let me get that. And here we go. Can you guys hear it all right? I can't. No. All right. As long as they can, that's all that matters. Yeah, I want to I skip like the first. Uh, like, can the you hear it on here? Because it all sucks. Yeah, I can hear it on my end. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I just think it's because it's just playing internally on it because I can hear it through my side. Yeah. But anyways, we can edit. I'll edit it in there. That's that's not too worried. We'll go with that. Yeah. 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 It, it's definitely pretty good. Yeah. Just the first, <laughs> just his his sheer like just like utter like that you, you could see his like soul being sucked out of him or you can hear it just like oh this is too fast for me like i can't keep up like oh god it's good all right yeah we'll definitely get that on there all right here we go we can move on uh to uh some 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 plays uh whether you think some spreads or some some calls of the week i'll uh, move on to that yeah that was- you want to start that out, Brando? No, you go ahead. All right. Well, there's a uh, depending on how you look at things. I play things a couple ways. I play them based on the spread or based on overall points all over under. Uh-huh. There's like last week, I saw the biggest one. I you know pat on the back. I did say this, but I'm wrong a lot of times too. But I did say the uh, Cleveland. I think it was Cleveland. Uh, Baltimore was like seven and a half point spread. Uh-huh. I said they're gonna crush the Browns. It's not even gonna be close. Yeah, you did say one that. One game won't bet on us. That's the one. And my wife kind of gave me a hard time. She's like. What do you mean spending our money? Anyway, uh, <laughs> they, they ended up crushing the Browns. I think it was 38 to 30. I don't even remember what the 38 to 28 to, to 7. 30, I don't even know. 38 to it was, it was like this. It was, they killed them. And so this began upon a, uh, an ass whooping of, I don't think Houston's very good. They got rid of their best weapon, and they, they introduced the mediocre one. They got rid of Hopkins, brought in David Johnson. Uh, trying to remember the uh, points. I think it's their, their – uh, the, 50, 52 point overall. Uh, I think there's a seven point dependent, six and a half to seven and a half point spread. However, you look at it, Baltimore, I think, covers that easy. I'm going to bet on Baltimore again because they're going to crush Houston. I think Houston's going to take at least till midseason to figure it out. I mean, Sarah took one about uh, Watson. I don't, I'm not a believer, but I think they get crushed again by, uh, by Baltimore. Here's the thing. I didn't really challenge you on this, but you say you're not a believer, but where would he be or without Bill O'Brien? Or where would Bill O'Brien be without Deshaun Watson? I think he'd be well, fired a long time he ago. He would be, yeah, yeah, he'd be in the garbage yeah. pail in the back of the 
fucking stadium. Like, yeah, he's awful. Like, whoever, yeah. like, was – whatever they were smoking, I don't know if I want to smoke it or, like, need to stay away from it. But, like, putting him as the GM as well, too, and the head coach, like, oh, right. God, that was just – I don't know. It just – He's another it, Belichick disciple. Yeah. And just he, another yeah. Belichick disciple who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Yeah, it, exactly. Okay. It. It, maybe you're right about that. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong about Watson and Bill O'Brien yeah. problem. Um, but regardless, I, I, yeah. While he's there, I can't. I can't bank on it. So much. Yeah, for it's fantasy purposes, that uh, if you know you think he's overvalued, yeah. I get it. I get it. Um, and, and to add on, I had three. Uh, throw all three out there. The other one was Tampa Bay, Carolina. Uh, I think they had a. It was a 48 and a half point spread. It was. There's a couple sides. So anyway, you yeah. look at it. At a point, 48 and a half to 49 and a half. Yeah. Depends on where you look. But um, <clears throat> the Tampa Bay was a – so the 49-point spread, <clears throat> I believe, goes way higher than that. I'm going to bet on the over yeah. completely because Tampa Bay, they could put up points. They have a bad kind of starting week, but Saints are good defense. The Carolina Panthers may have the worst defense in the league, either them or the, the Vikings. We'll see. But they also could put up points. So I feel like it's going to be the whole – the 49-point over-under, <laughs> taking the over for sure on that one. Yeah. And the last one I have, which isn't a, it's a more of a spread on teams, is Arizona versus Washington. It's six and a half points. I'm taking Arizona completely over that. They're, they're uh, it's only a 47 and a half point uh, uh, total over under, but uh, I'm not taking that. I'm taking just the uh, the cover the spread of Arizona because Washington's not a good team. I don't think they're, they beat the Eagles, which don't seem to be a good team either. Wentz kind of shits the bed at times, but uh, yeah. Arizona beat San Francisco, but just, you know, Almost full champs, and they're a good team still. There's no question. And their yeah. their defense held them down. They're gonna crush Washington. They're gonna cover the spread. I'm gonna bet on that for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, why don't we kind of just do this? Um, we go over like, you know, positions: quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and, and we'll just kind of go. Um, we could take turns with these. Uh, but I have, you know, the main reason we do, obviously, the the over-under for the week is the Vegas totals because when you start, like, picking a lineup, you're, you're splitting – some of these guys are, like, splitting hairs. Um, so, you know, it might factor into your decision uh, based on the point total for the game because they're, they're Vegas for a reason. Uh, they, they, have, they hold all the money. <laughs> so Atlanta and Dallas at 53 points um, – you know, that's definitely a, a good one to stack this week with both of those teams. Uh, let's be honest, they neither of those teams have great defenses. Uh, Dallas has quite a few injuries um, with Van Der Esch out uh, this past week, a broken collarbone in Atlanta. It's just, they just never have good corners. So, uh, and then Baltimore and Houston, 52 points. You know, we saw uh, Houston – past two times they play they've got ran off the field by uh, the Chiefs so you know Baltimore is a high-powered offense you can expect more of the same uh, Green Bay and Detroit 48 and a half we also have Tampa and Carolina at 48 and a half and then uh, Kansas City and LA Chargers at 48 points so let's start uh, with quarterbacks uh, my plays of the week I really like Dak this week in a stack. Um, I do think that uh, the Chargers – are not the Chargers. The Rams present a lot of problems. Aaron Donald blew up the, the interior of their offensive line. And then you got Ramsey out on, uh, you know, covering Amari Cooper. Gallup at times. This He's, he's Ramsey. Uh, he's Jalen Ramsey for a reason. So I do expect a much better – uh, performance from him this week going against Atlanta. Uh, also like Matt Ryan in that game at 6,600. Uh, Lamar, he's 8,200, but I mean, he has the ability to score 48 points. So, yeah. you know, he, he is worth paying up for in some leagues. I'm not saying I'm doing it in every league, but probably a couple lineups. It's definitely worth a shot. Um, and then Kyler Murray, really high on him again this week. Um, do 6,100, I would, you know, stack with him and DeAndre Hopkins, definitely about it this week. What about you guys, quarterbacks? 
I, I'm obsessed with Josh Allen. I don't know why. I just have a feeling he's going to have a good year. If he can hold on to the damn football, that would be amazing. Uh, but 300 yards, uh, yeah. Yeah, 300 yards, what, and I can't remember how much he put on the ground. Uh, well, he had like 17 carries or something like that, too. It was ridiculous. Um, but yeah. I'm big on DFS on when it comes down to that, like that and Cam Newton. Um, you know, if you're going to be able to run the ball like that and get it in the end zone every time, you know, to me that's a safer pick on what you have. Mm-hmm. And I think with Allen, you could potentially get that extra bonus in there if uh, – he has a good day throwing or uh, not fumbling. You know, that's a good thing. Cam, I think, is a good, just safe bet. That's really kind of where I'm at on it. Um, those are really kind of who I'm thinking about this week. Right. Anyways. Of course. Well, those are good picks, man. I love them. Uh, I'll add a two in there that I've, I'm going to play this week is uh, Matt Stafford. He had a pretty good week last week and then had a better week if the under switch didn't drop a football, but literally <laughs> yeah. landed right, right in his lap for the win. <laughs> it would give him another, you know, five, four and a half points. Yeah, that was that was pretty bad. Uh, I think Stafford, they're playing against the, the uh, Packers. I don't think their defense is great. I think they're okay. They're mediocre, but I think Stafford is, is a little line, especially if Kenny Dollar he did all that with, without Kenny Dollar last week, so I think he'll have a good week this week, especially if he comes back. And then uh, what I mentioned last week, but I'm bringing up again is Rivers. I'm not a Rivers fan. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't. I don't love the guy. But in the beginning of the year, he usually starts out really strong, and he's playing against the Vikings, who just gave up a ton of touchdown passes. To Rodgers, their secondary is just destroyed. They're horrible. They're probably going to be a, a defense people streaming against a lot this year. So Rivers is another one. He's uh, so Scott is uh, 7200 uh, Fanduel, 6200 DraftKings. Rivers is 7100 Fanduel, 5900 DraftKings. Yeah, speaking guys, of the yeah. Vikings, uh, they their defense cost me negative three points. So yeah, that's uh, that, 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 that should have been another walk of shame for me because I should have <laughs> I should have exactly not started point a, point. a defense. So their defense you're gonna stream against this year. It's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Really, you'll see. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's not a good defense. <laughs> Sorry, I wish you guys. Sure. <laughs> I've got this hooked up to our uh, podcast thing in here, and I have the. The because I'm recording it on our audio side as well, too. And so I've been hitting all like the soundboards and shit. And every time Brian's or Brandon starts going, oh, I wish I would do that. Give <laughs> nice. that womp, womp, womp. <laughs> oh, that's dumb. Yeah, you're gonna have to listen. Yeah, to that. um, I will start out yeah. with the running backs if you guys are good with that. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it leads into what I was the reason I want to start the running backs is it leads into the guys talking about rivers. The reason, or not the only reason, but a big reason Eckler did so well last year is because of Rivers. He likes to throw to running backs. Look at his yeah. – it's a ridiculous – he threw to Eckler 90% of the time last year. He got 90% of the receptions with you. He throws the running backs a lot. So, you know, in the last week, uh, Jonathan Taylor got six receptions and nine times, seven or eight. I, I forget. I can't remember. Um, and that was only with Jonathan Taylor playing basically two-thirds of the game. Uh, he's 50 – 5,800 and 5,700, respectively, between the two. Marlon Mack is out for the year with Achilles. He's cheap. Jonathan Taylor is going to, I think, is going to crush the guy's a beast. He's, you know, he's comp to take on Barkley. If you watch the actual film on him, the guy's super fast. <laughs> the as big as he is, he's a monster. Um, yeah. Another guy I'm kind of iffy about, Melvin Gordon, because of the matchup. But I feel he'll get a right. lot of passes. There's, Philip Lindsay's out for at least a couple games. They said yeah. Mount Turf Toe. Yeah, uh, two Melvin to three Gordon's, weeks. Yeah, it's, he's at 6,800 on uh, FanDuel and 5,200 on DraftKings. Gordon is going to be – I think he'll make up for – in a full PPR league, I think Evan Silver did the research. He said you get every uh, target is worth – one target is worth uh, like two and a half runs or 2.7 runs. So if he, yeah. even if he gets like six targets, do the math. Like I think Gordon will get a lot of uh, targets on that game. He'll be – you know, this is coming from Raiders fans, so this is not biased. <laughs> this is uh, do well. The last right. time I was Miles Sanders. He's at 6,800, 6,700, and 6,800, I think, respectively. Uh, he was out last week with an injury, but he looked at the backups. They all suck. In terms of my, yeah. my fellow believe Boston Scott. But there's no one in the background to, to like, challenge him for the job. So if he's healthy, you know, play it as it comes up to uh, Sunday. But Miles Sanders is, is very, very underpriced, and the guy can crush it. Absolutely. 
Yeah. I'm there. Um, I will say. Should I go? No, oh, yeah. No, I was going to say I'm there with you on that. That's where I'm struggling this week between. And I know uh, Brandon keeps hitting me up on is that, you know, Zach Moss, Devin Singletary uh, right there. I just I just got this feeling. <laughs> I got this feeling that Moss so is going to take – just start taking it and going and going and going with it. So, I'm really kind of curious to see what he does in the future with it on there. Uh, but I've been reading a lot more uh, uh, Cream Hunt as well, and this as well too, which, you know – I got my personal feelings yeah. about that guy, but you know, he is a damn good football player on there, but you know what I was really surprised about was uh, Adrian Peterson. Uh, I went back and actually got to watch a little bit of that game and yeah, yeah he's obviously the best running he back on the well. Lions, but he played well for his age and he, you know, I mean, he was definitely going downhill quite a bit on that and it was looking pretty good. So I was, I was actually kind of surprised with that. And I'm not sure I don't have the numbers in front of me on what he yeah. has, uh, but green Bay could be kind of an interesting thing. They're playing in Detroit. So, you know, yeah, I don't know. It could be, could be an interesting play right there. Yeah. It's funny. Actually on green hunt, I saw a, a tweet on Twitter. It was like, why do people spend a second round pick on Kareem Hunt's handcuff? Uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I was like, ouch, that's, uh, that's a deep burn. It, it's but, arguable that he's the better running back. Yeah. I mean, oh, it depends yeah. who you talk to. He may be the better actually yeah. overall running back. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. But that's where I'm just. The guy's incredible. He's always in Kansas City. He's a beast. He's got incredible yeah. balance. He's, he's really good. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm really curious about, too, is uh, uh, over at the Steelers because James Conner cannot stay on the field at all. Uh, but Benny. Right. Boo, boo, Benny. That's why I picked yeah. the Benny Snell up. Yeah, I know. That's where, like, I was a little late to the game on that. I was like – because I had it last night and I was looking at it and I was like, I put my phone down because we had our VR league and I put my phone down and then I just completely forgot about it. And I woke up this morning I was like, shit, damn. <laughs> I was like, I messed that one up. Oh, well. Well, also, let's yeah. round up the uh, finish up the receivers and. Uh, well, I haven't gone. I haven't gone yet with the running backs. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Forget about me, bro. <laughs> 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 no, I. Uh, now, with with all these, I, I'll say we we record this on Wednesday, so uh, I'm not setting my lineup on Wednesday. We're it's consider it wide netting it Wednesday. So um, you know, I like Zeke. This week, again, with that high-scoring game, 8,200. Zeke looked great last week. I expect him to do well again this week. Uh, Derek Henry, I felt like the Broncos did pretty good um, in the interior, um, you know, bottling him up. But I I do expect him to have a bounce-back week. I'm with you on Jonathan Taylor. Um, You know, that guy's a beast. Everyone knew uh, he was going to break out at some point, and Marlon Mack's gone. So that, you know, the path is clear for him to do so. And then with Naeem Hines, he had a great week last week. Um, could expect more of that this week. 5,300, can't go wrong there. I do kind of, you know, although I'm down on Eckler, I expect him to bounce back. Uh, I like him this week at 6,500. Uh, Kenyon Drake's another guy. I'm a big Chase Edmonds guy. I don't believe in Kenyon Drake long term. No. But this week I like him. Uh, Delvin Cook, same thing. Um, well, I actually really like Delvin Cook. Uh, 7,000. And then uh, Ronald Jones, I do think he's going to do much better this week, specifically in GPP at like 5,200. I, I really like him. There um, are so many people on him. Ronald Jones? He, yeah, he, he I just – looked like the best back he, but last week. He, well, yeah, the biggest right reason run. why, in my opinion, is uh, people who, who follow <clears> – <throat> excuse me, who uh, pay attention to who really ad call. Like uh, Rotoviz is one of the places I follow a lot. Like uh, yeah. he was a – guy was a beast and he was a monster in college and so a lot of times that that athleticism will translate especially at running back position yeah NFL. and uh, that's why people are so far on him it's like Keyshawn Vaughn came in but Ronald Jones was better in every single aspect in college than Keyshawn Vaughn was so yeah uh, there's yeah. a lot of hype for Keyshawn uh, but that's why they're on him because of what his college profile was yeah um all right moving on to wide receivers so uh, again, with those stacks, I, you know, I'm in on Dak, and uh, with that, I think Amari, Gallup, or Lamb, one of these guys are going to hit, specifically 
in like GPP, if you can hit, you can get Lamb or you can hit Gala. You know, some of these guys are a little less owned. You know, it could it could really pay off for you this week. Um, same game. I'm going with Ridley this week at six thousand. Uh, I would stack him with Matt Ryan, of course. And uh, another guy who we saw Monday night, he had a good good game when he caught the ball, but he had some drops. He's pissed about it, you know, per, per camp reports, for his comments today, Jerry Judy. Um, I'm not high on anyone else on the Broncos this week, but Jerry Judy I think is going to have uh, a really good bounce back game. And um, – I like A.J. Brown I, I, as well. Uh, I didn't think he had a great night the other night. I expect a big year out of him. I really do expect him to bounce back. 6,700, it's not a bad risk. Uh, Thielen, expect another big week from him, 7,200. Uh, if we're, you know, talking about stacks, if you're going to stack Lamar Jackson with Marquise Brown, I don't think you can go wrong there either. Um, it's going to be the one of the more high-scoring games of the week. Uh, Marquise Brown at 6,200. I, I do like McLaurin better this week. I think it's time for him to get in the end zone maybe a couple times at 5,900. And then, obviously, Hopkins and Murray, as I mentioned earlier. Um, mentioned Judy earlier in that same game. We got uh, Broncos are really down on corners. A.J. Bouye, he brought, they brought him here. Uh, they lost Chris Harris. A.J. Bouye is not going to play. He's going to be out several weeks. Uh, he just went on IR today with that uh, dislocated shoulder. So I really like Juju um, this week and also uh, Deontay Johnson and specifically in like a GPP format. Um, you know, they could blow up. What do you guys think? Wide receivers. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, so in, in more of the 50-50s type of play, uh, you know, again, it was something I mentioned, it's kind of a stack, I guess. Rivers. Hilton is playing against the Vikings. The Vikings yeah. secondary is, is yeah. yeah, he's one too. So time with T.Y. Hilton is 6,300 and Fandle is at 5,700. He's, he's cheap. And the guy yeah. has shown that he could be a stud. He's, looks like he's got off his injury. Um, he's playing against a really bad defense. He can be a, a stud. Yeah. Um, Robert Woods is is cheaper is, is uh, cheaper than Cooper Cup and has outperformed him in quite a few performances as well. So he's yeah he's really cheap and the guy I'm on pretty heavily like Woods is 6,400 6, between the two. Uh, Woods is is a stud and he keeps it's this thing where keep, Cup is always more expensive but Woods seems to at least outperform at least half the time. PP is one of the ones you mentioned, Marquise Brown. I think that any week that guy could put up 30, 40 points. Takes one or two big plays, and he's, he's a beast. Uh, Mike Evans, I mean, with GPP, you're, you're shooting for the stars. If people gave up yeah. on him, he's, he's had that bad hamstring, but he could be a beast. Yeah. Um, Derrick Henry is another one. He got, like, 30 touches against the Broncos. He didn't do a lot, but that's what you want to see. Mm-hmm. Now he's going against the Jaguars. It's, you know, right. he could just score him. Yeah, I got to think on Derrick Henry, too. It just, it, To me, it just seems like I don't think he'll start ramping up until the end of the season. I just, <laughs> I, I have a feeling he's going to just take his time. Like, once his defense start getting worn down, he'll start to start trucking people on there. Uh, yeah, I, that's my whole thing. I just, I, I'm really, like, it, this is not, like, I'm not trying to be a homer for some, you know, by any means. But I really am interested in this <laughs> Chiefs-Chargers game. Like, yeah. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, me being a homer. Yeah, but no, I'm really actually interested in it because I don't. You know, don't lie, Joey. Yeah, I know. Don't but <laughs> when it comes down to DFS on this, that's why I've just been, you know, kind of eyeballing that height. I, I yeah. just, I think that 48. You know, that's I don't know. I think I mean, I, if it was me, I'd be putting money way over on yeah. that. Uh, but I just have a feeling playing in the new stadium, and yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just kind of curious about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, tight ends. Finish that out. Finish on a tight end. Yeah, buddy. Who, who do you guys got? Logan Thomas. Uh, Logan Thomas got a ton of targets and a touchdown last week. The, the, the Reds, he's a tight end. For those of you who don't know, because they're like, who the fuck is Logan Thomas? Yeah. <laughs> he's a tight end of the Washington Redskins. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of weapons. They don't have a lot of weapons. They have McLaurin and can you name the receiver? Yeah. Maybe one. If you're lucky. 
Uh, Logan Thomas is he's been in the league for actually a little bit, but he's uh he's got he ran like towards the top of the most routes run. The guy's a, I don't say he's a stud, but he's in a good opportunity. Yeah. He's gonna in a good position for uh, success, and he, he's really cheap on both Fanduel and DraftKings. I got low. I'm kind of a guy when I do DFS DFF, I punt the tight end position usually, uh-huh. and so this week Logan Thomas looks to be. I, I assume that they're gonna be trailing Arizona. And they're going to be playing throwing the ball a lot. So, uh, the running backs all are kind of not very good. Uh, so, probably going to have to throw the ball in Logan Thomas is a big part of that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I also, again, I like Andrews. Um, you know, he's one of the top tight ends of the game. I like Lamar Jackson and him to keep that chemistry going. Uh, Hayden Hurst, I do think a big reason why he didn't really have the breakout uh, last week is he drew Jamal Adams. Uh, he's not going to have Jamal Adams this week. So, um, you know, I certainly think he, he can be in on a big week, specifically at his 4,600 tag um, and not having a big week last week. He's not going to be that owned. So he could definitely uh, really come through for you in cash and specifically GPP. Um, Herndon, same thing. I like Herndon to – A lot to, of targets last week. Yeah. 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 Uh, if he – keep the targets up, get in the end zone. You know, he could certainly have a big week. And I'm going to tell you this, this pains me to say, I'm a Broncos fan. I start tight ends against the Broncos because they can't cover tight ends. <laughs> they haven't been able to cover tight ends for years. John U. Smith, I knew he was going to get in the end zone on Monday. He did. Eric Ebron, 4,300. I'm telling you, start this guy. Uh, he's probably going to score a touchdown or two, and if he doesn't, he should have. Just going to throw that out there. Um, that's it. You got any, Joey? Yeah, I was – actually, I was going to – my two that I was going to bring up on that was definitely Eric Ebron. Uh, you're right on that fact. I mean, because that's a big thing yeah. that I always looked at on. When I do tight ends, it's just – if it's not a high-scoring offense, whatever, whatever, you know, it's – I don't know. Tight ends is just kind of – you got to really kind of look at the matchup that's going through there. But Eric Ebron, yeah, I was definitely going on that. Um, you know, a, another person that – well, I was going to bring up Logan Thomas as well. I think that's a great one. Uh, the other one, Tyler Higby, um, I yeah, was – Yeah, he's solid on there. But, you know, I wasn't like really – I don't know. I, I guess I'm just like – I was hoping Goff would look a little bit better. It just didn't – I don't know. It just didn't look there for me on that. I mean, well, I mean, Michael Brown was taken off with it. So, you know, there wasn't much to really kind of do with it, but yeah, those were kind of my, you know, my ones that I had from there. Uh, but at that Logan Thomas one in our league, I keep like looking at it, I, like the free agent list. I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> like <laughs> I keep like, Oh, be on your roster soon. <laughs> yeah. No, it's kind of like, Oh Yeah. Yeah, on there, but yeah, DFS though, I totally. It's kind of a gross pick, like especially. In, in, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and season long, it's kind of tough, but DFS is like, yeah, it's a good shot. But in, yeah. In the season long though, like you know, tied in apart from the top five is always a crap shoot. So. Oh yeah, no, it definitely is. Right. All right. Well, look, um, you know, DFS is fun, but. The weekly grind isn't for everyone. Um, This is exactly why we have partnered with Thrive Fantasy. We are only picking the top tier athletes every week. So you're skipping the countless hours of research and you sign up with Thrive Fantasy where you only pick 10 out of 20 player prop options to build your lineup. Now you can find them again in the app store or at uh, thrivefantasy.com. But remember to use promo code FANTASYFLING for that $20 sign bonus with that deposit. Now, regardless of whether you're just playing a single lineup prop on Thrive Fantasy or a GPP million dollar contest, um, whether it be DraftKings or FanDuel, you need strategy. The old adage is that it takes money to make money. It's true. And the difference here is it really just takes one lineup that could change your life. Um, Top guy last week won $200,000. So as the pros, uh, they have a process. They don't just get lucky. Uh, They put in countless hours. The good news is you don't have to. So if you want to be a DFS pro, you just need to learn from the pros. And we've got great news. You can now learn from the pros at 20% off with a DFS 
Army VIP membership. Just use promo code Fantasy Fling for 20% off. DFS Army, turning average Joes into DFS pros. That's it for week two. Good luck. Yeah, buddy. Three. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> we out. Lightweight. Yeah, buddy. Lightweight.